Good morning, traders, and welcome to the uh, Bookmap Live Trading Webinar. Uh, today we have Scott Pulsini. Uh, he's a futures trader, so uh, he will be taking live positions in here. It is in demo, paper trading mode, uh, just so you know. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, we've been holding the advanced webinars in here for the last couple of weeks uh, over the holidays. Uh, and uh, just, uh, you know, testing some things out. And it seems like we're getting a lot of feedback that uh, most of you guys want uh, to look at uh, or access these webinars uh, through Discord. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we may we may offer that um, uh, and uh, uh, move forward in that in that direction. Uh, anyway, uh, these webinars, they're it's all about the uh, the education here, uh, not about Bookmap the product. It's about uh, understanding how to read it, how to uh, learn order flow uh, through it uh, and uh, applying that to the way that you trade uh, to best help you uh, as the user. Uh, so the. Um, uh, we have an educational course. Uh, we, are, we also have um, uh, the live advanced webinars that uh, go through live forward-looking analysis. So we read the uh, uh, current market and, and then we give the insight to where we think price will move next uh, so that you can apply what you've learned from the course. You can ask questions. Uh, it should be a pretty good roadmap uh, to, to get you up and running about how to learn uh, to read a uh, order flow and integrate it within your trading uh, and then we have uh, two days a week we have uh, two different traders a J trader a stocks trader on Wednesday and Scott Pulsini a futures trader on Thursday uh, to listen to their strategies their ways of reading the order flow their ways of trading and trade management uh, their outlooks on the market etc so it should be a pretty robust education that you're getting uh, uh, from Bookmap here, uh, and it, it, to help you uh, become a better trader, this is the goal. All right, so uh, let's um, see if Scott's in here. Scott, are you in here already or not? I do not see you. There you are. Can you hear me? Please? Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, just uh, double checking here, and I'll, I'll we'll, you'll start streaming in just a second here. Uh, let me just go through the disclosures uh, and the information here as well. Uh, you guys know who Scott is. He's been quite quite a nice story in here. Uh, you can you can read about him also on the web. Um, uh, he, here is his contact information. If you have uh, specific questions about his trading strategies, uh, his ways of trading, uh, you want to reach out to him. He also offers um, uh, mentorship services. Uh, as well as a trade copier. He has a trading room in Discord as well. So I'm going to put all of this into the chat for you guys uh, so that uh, you guys can um, uh, reach out to him directly. Okay. Uh, let's go through the disclosures and then turn it right over to Scott. General disclosure. All bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. All right, risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So just understand what you're getting involved in here and what this is all about. It is for educational purposes only. You would be foolish, uh, or I think it is foolish, to uh, just uh, nonchalantly jump into trades uh, based on uh, the activity uh, of the trader uh, here. So uh, it's to learn why they're getting involved in these trades. What are their setups? What are they looking at? Uh, take a step back uh, and, and look at the kind of bigger picture of, uh, you know, uh, learn uh, from these traders and then go back and study it uh, and then apply it to maybe how you trade. Uh, see if you get any, glean anything uh, of, of interest or, or use uh, that you can then apply within your trading. 
All right, that's the goal here. So uh, Scott, why don't you uh, go ahead? I'll stop uh, 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 presenting here, and uh, then we'll take a look at your uh, streaming. Uh, Are you there, Scott? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah. So if you want to, if you, you, whenever you're ready. Okay, there you go. Yeah, my screen you see crude. Oh, uh, yeah. One one thing, uh, everyone here. I am gonna um, also stream uh, Scott's screen here. Uh, so if uh, you you we can have I think unlimited people in the voice channel here, but only 50 people will be able to see the first 50 uh, will be able to see Scott's screen here. So don't worry if that's the case. I will also start streaming, uh, and uh, you will be able to uh, see. Okay, my screen now as well. So you can see under advanced webinar in the voice channel. Um, try to access Scott's, but if you can't, you can access mine uh, and just click on it and to, to watch the stream. Uh, so uh, just wanted to get that across, uh, Scott. Uh, other than that, uh, take it away. All righty. Uh, you, you got my crude book map, right? Yes, correct. Okay. How are you, how are so you lots, feeling, by the way? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was that. going to say. Lots going on in the last... Uh, few days i obviously i was sick last week and i thought it was the flu for i was literally in, pretty much in bed for 14 straight days and then um i went to the i was i tested three different times for covid negative um two at home and then one at the you know at the one of the testing centers and then my wife tested positive like last Thursday, so I tested again and I was positive and I, I, I had it the entire time. It just wasn't showing up in my, my opinion because I felt the exact same way all the way through. So then I had to go on Sunday, I had to go to the emergency room um, <clears throat> where I got diagnosed with COVID pneumonia. So that was that was special. So I was real close to be putting on being put on oxygen slash or a ventilator and you go on a ventilator with COVID it's not that's not a good thing so um my oxygen level was like borderline keeping me there and then they, they basically just sent me home and said to monitor it so then I've been monitoring it for the last few days and I'm, I think I'm out of the woods but uh it was pretty hairy there for a few days um so I've been doing a you know my webinars sporadically in my room just because it's <clears throat> hard for me to talk for that that amount of time so you know we'll see how today goes i should be okay to, to you know go the full hour plus but <coughs> if i start to struggle that's why i'm uh got a little hairy there for a while scott what, um, whatever you can do um uh is is greatly uh, appreciated um so uh, uh you know take a rest if you need um whatever uh but uh uh, you know, go as far as you can, or whenever you you start to feel it and you need to to, to rest, um, uh, please feel free. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm should be all right. I mean, I got my little oxygen monitor, and it's it's better, so that should be all right. <clears throat> um, all right, so stuff's very volatile, obviously. Um, keeping an eye on crew right here. Uh, this this stuff just fired off you can see down here um got some stop runs and then you can see it also in this uh the sweep indicator the new sweep indicator that it's been very valuable um you get that with global plus we've talked about it a few times but what's great about this is <clears throat> so I, I did get the alert for this the stop run right i got 177 what it did is it basically added these two together so you know if i wasn't if I was just trading this without seeing the sweeps, I probably wouldn't even have drawn this zone because I would have just saw, saw this. I'm like, yeah, 83 and then another 94. But um, you can see this was basically one sweep, <clears throat> including that. So I did draw the zone. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just waiting to see this market to move an ATR away from this zone. Um, either way. Uh, you know, if we move and Q stop, stop, sell and Q 157 contracts. I'll go there in a second. So ATR is 26, but I use the five minute ATR. Yes, is... yes, stop, stop, buy alert. 
Of course, everything's going to fire off at one time now. Um, 27 ticks. So I'll come back to this. If this moves 26, seven points or 27 ticks away from the zone, we'll decide what to do there. But uh, it's just hanging around on the zone. I'm more interested in trading uh, equities here. It's very volatile and it's a pretty good opportunity. I missed an awesome short here. I'll show you it in ES. I ran downstairs and missed the retest of this stop run zone. And it's uh, I'm already about uh, 20 points in my favor, or would have been 20 points in my favor. but. Um, let's see. So there's really nothing. Can't really see anything on the uh, sub chart here as far as to draw a zone in Nasdaq. So I'll come back to here. Might as well show you my missed S&P trade that just fired off here. Um, <clears throat> see the stop run. Well, once again, these sweeps really help accentuate the area. But that was um, over well, my threshold for. Uh, ES stops, there's 500, this one was 541. You can see there's another, you know, that's part of the sweeps, but of the sweep move here, but there was 913 total. So that means there was another, you know, close to 400 behind this sweep. So this was an important zone and you got your ATR move away. Here's your exact retest. And this is actually, this is picture perfect for what I look for. And I had run downstairs to get a glass of water and I missed this trade. So here's your ATR. It was about seven points at the time. Here's your retest. Here's your failure. I, I, you should get in about three quarters of an ATR. My stop will go three quarters of an ATR above the zone. And you can see this is just, of course, perfect, straight down, no heat whatsoever. Because that's how it works. But um, kind of sucks. But there's another one right around the corner. So it's just it's good for learning purposes. Again. You know what this is one of my five setups this is what they call what i call a stop and hold so you got your self stop run um again i just showed it and it held and big money came in and continued to push it down so the other the other stop play i play is a dumb and dumber when you get the stop run and there's no follow through and then it just immediately rejects this one was a stop and hold so <clears throat> so we will wait for a new setup in here um, crude still bounce around and so on the other market I'm watching here is this is wheat <clears throat> so you can see here there is um flurry of stop activity you can see again the sweep indicator is incredible I still haven't had a chance to go back I told you guys last week that you know these thresholds for the sweeps are going to be different than the sub chart they're just more uh, i can't really explain it why they would be that much more but they are um, so i got to go back and do research on what the threshold should be just first because again you're not always going to get so all stops are sweeps but all sweeps aren't stop runs right so that's where you know you'll be able to draw zones just based on this stuff so say this wasn't a stop run but you see 1200 sweeps well you definitely want to draw that zone because someone swiped 1200 contracts and somebody's caught you know so whoever you have to have buyers to have if there's sellers there's buyers so somebody in this area is caught so um but anyway this was a stop or there was back-to-back -back stop runs here if you can see when i expand this he had 400 here again this is the stop the sweep was about 580 so a little more about 120 180 more behind it and then you had another one so i just drew this zone for the whole thing both stop runs AKA in the sweeps. Um, and then what I look for is a an ATR move away from the zone, which we got. So ATR is 2.12, 2.14, you can make it two and a quarter. So the bottom of the zone was 44.50-ish. Um, we definitely got down to 41.25, so that's over three, three cents away. And here's your retest. So this is the pattern over and over and over in every market. It doesn't matter if you're trading wheat, gold, crude. It doesn't matter. Any futures market, it's volume runs the show. And if you can figure out, you know, these are one, one of my five setups. And then I play it as when we move away, we retest and fail. Those are the best, best trades. Um, it's, it's a conservative way to trade. Again, sometimes, talk about this every week, where... You'll get your zone and then it'll move away and i'll just keep going and it won't retest and that's happened a lot lately 
uh, in equities yesterday, it happened a ton. I missed a ton of trades. I said, you know, I wanted to be short, and there's setup after setup, and they weren't retesting. And I'm sitting here watching a 60 point down move in ES, and I don't have anything on. That's that's the risk that you take by being a little more conservative, waiting for the retest of the zone. So, um, you know, again, we I say it every week. This is not up for debate, right? This was huge stop runs. In this area that's the science the art is how you want to trade these zones you may say hey the minute this drops out of the zone a half atr or whatever you decide on you're getting in right so that's the stuff that you you'll determine once you learn how to play these setups and understand what what you're drawing and what you're looking at then you can make your own decisions on how you want to play the zone so right now in my room i'm doing an experiment for the next last it's going to be close to a month now even though i've taken some days off um <clears throat> where every, I'm taking every trade, regardless of where we're at on the chart, where we're at on market profile, so on and so forth. Whenever I see a volume set up, as long as it moves an ATR away or retest failure, I'm taking it. Um, and just to show everybody in my room and you guys that, you know, you can be profitable just trading volume setups. That's how, when I originally made my millions of dollars, all I was doing was sitting here watching this this most simple simplistic form of trading just watching the order flow and this is kind of the same um, same idea as what I'm trying to display here but as you get you know better if you're really good market analysis uh, and, and, uh, you know someone that able to, to really read the technical analysis side of things well then you know you'll do even better because you, you still get your your volume setups but you may say okay this is an this is very bearish or this is very bullish and then you can you know trade accordingly but i'm just showing you that you can trade these volume setups on their own in a vacuum and still be profitable and then when you you know apply them into important areas that you deem important they're even more powerful so anyways um this is the I got the ATR move away. Here's your retest. Now I'm looking for three quarters of an ATR failure. Uh, <clears throat> again, two point, we'll say two point two and a quarter. So, um, say about a point and a point three quarters will be my entry here. So I'm going to get this set up. So. 44, 42.50, 42.75 will be my entry on this short. So if I get filled, then what I will do is I will put my stop. You can go, I used to go a full ATR above the zone. I, I don't think that's completely necessary anymore. I think you can go about three quarters and save yourself a point or two. But um, so if I get filled on this, then my stop's going to go three quarters of an ATR above here. So about a point and three quarters above this zone would put me at. Um, 752 and three quarters so we'll just put this in now just because i know i'll get sidetracked um so that's where my stop will go once i mean i'm putting it in now but i'm assuming i'm going to get filled on this so again this is wheat so we'll see how that pans out uh, 42 quarter one second here Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, of course, I, we just got another. <laughs> I just had another opportunity to get short here. The yes, and I missed this one too. This is the problem with the webinars, and I'm on one screen and I'm missing this. You can see this came back and pretty much retested this zone. So came, came within uh, two ticks. So I could have shorted this again. You know, I, I prefer to see a new setup, but, you know, so many times if you miss, you know, you miss the first trade, it'll come back, it'll retest it again, and you can do the same pattern. Stop goes in ATR above there, and, but again, I'm hoping that we get something new so I can actually participate. <clears throat> um... I'm actually surprised at the lack of signals so far in equities. It's for how volatile it is. You'd think there'd be more firing off, but what's going on here? Uh, okay, so really nothing in. Uh, oh no, there was right here. I missed this as well. I didn't hear this go off. Twelve. Interesting. 
All right, so I still wouldn't be in this trade regardless. It hasn't retested this area, but you can see here 210 sell ice, which is a lot for today. We talk about this too. So, you know, those of you that have my course, we have the thresholds for these markets, but certain days you're going to have to, you know, if you, if you keep seeing 200 every five minutes, you want to increase your threshold for the day because you're not, you don't want to see these setups more than, you know, three, four, five times in a day. So if you're seeing a bunch of them, you got to up your threshold, but 200 is a lot for today. It's the most I've seen. So this is definitely worth drawing the zone. So again, what you want to do for you newer peeps on here, you want to, you know, go to your little cross here and you want to just judge where the, the spike came in and incorporate all the prices from across where the spike until it ended. And that's what this is basically. So you can see here we moved away very quickly and we never retested it. So I wouldn't have been in this trade anyway on the long side. <clears throat> I'll, I'll still go long on a retest, but it just hasn't retested yet is what I'm saying. So ATR is, I'm sure it's real pleasant. Yeah, 50 points. So again, you got to cut down your size too. If, you know, when the, when the volatility, that's why we are using this ATR method because it helps you adjust the volatility but dynamically, right? But you can't be trading. So say you normally trade a two lot in NASDAQ or even two micros. You know, if you've got a smaller account, you trade two micros. Well, if you're risking 70 points on the trade, you can't put two on. You can put on, you know, one. So we have my room. We talk about this every week too, this, uh, this risk calculator um, spreadsheet where you can judge. Again, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, you know, Again, I haven't really gone through exactly what I have to risk here, but you can see like NASDAQ, if I'm putting on, if I'm risking anything over 67 points, I can only put on one, right? So this is, uh, guys in my room have worked on this, where you, you, know, you put your account size, here's your risk. You, you don't want to be risking more than 2% on any individual trade, and it shows you how much you can risk. So again, if you have a $10,000 account, you don't have to change anything here. Just use, one, you should only be trading micros, period, um, but just use these as micros instead of the regular contract size. So hopefully that uh, makes sense. <coughs> so anyway, we uh, the top of the zone was, 1750 so 6750 would have been a full ATR which we easily got this thing just ripped 120 points off of here so th this is exactly what I'm talking about as far as you have to determine as a trader you know there's no dispute what this was this was sell ice right what you know you may have said hey you know what we're overdone on the south side the minute we break out of here I'm going long and you know you already caught yourself a 100 plus point trade I'm waiting for the retest and I may not get it. So this, I would not, I would not participate in this long, right? That's happens sometimes. So you gotta, I'd say, I'd say every week, I, it's about 80% of the time it does retest the zone, but there's times that it doesn't and you're going to be sitting here fuming that you didn't get the trade on, but you got to determine for yourself if you want to be aggressive or not, or if you want to wait for retests of the zone, right? The, again, the conservative method is to wait for retests, um, the entire percentage but sometimes you miss the trade, kind of like I'm doing on this one. All right, so I had my chance, and if I wanted to get in aggressively, but I'm not getting I'm take every trade I'm taking with these zones. I'm waiting for retest. So that one did not retest. On to the next setup. <clears throat> it still could, but we'll see. Still haven't been filled on that short. That crude. I think we may got an ATR below here. Let's see, 25, so 26 is the 26 ticks. The bottom of the zone was 40, say 42. So 22 and 16, we needed a touch. Not quite, eh, pretty close. 18, so we had pretty close to an ATR below there. So I, I may take this short if it, um, see what the ATR was. 
because the ATR might have been a little less at that point, too. It's pretty close. So we'll see how this trades. Um, you know, we'll say this is the this was the ATR move. Here's your retest. So if this turns around and fails, I'll go short and I'll pull my stop three quarters of an ATR above there. This just again, it's not just jumping in the short. I tell my room this all the time, right? Here, you, yeah, you got your ATR move pretty close. Here's your retest. You don't just jump in because this thing can go right through this zone now, right? It's when this fails that's when you get in. And I go three quarters of an ATR below there. So we'll see if that happens. If not, then we'll wait for another setup. <clears throat> so you know, I'm just going straight looking at the volume right now. Um, I'll try to. I'll try to go over some of these market conditions here. So we've been talking about this the last few days in my room. Crude's very bullish again, so it should be some sweet gas prices coming up. Not. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about the launch of this guy here. He broke out. Put more balance. The other day we had a fail breakdown. This is one of my favorite trades where it broke down out of, out of this balance area and recovered. Got right through that volume node, ended. gone. Yes, as, as so now we're moving back into this prior area here. So, you know, <clears throat> intermediate term, this is bullish. Long term, it's still bearish, in my opinion, because we, you know, we have yet to recover we'll this thing. All right, so all we're doing now is retesting. So markets can come back, retest the bottom of prior balance and do that, or the high volume node. And still so we get that kind of detail here from this particular player. State. The tracker is not going to show um, that about so, that one guy and start to understand the context. Long term. So that's so why uh, we, we cover. I'm just thing. showing you guys, you know, that this could pause. Anyway, guys, let's right let, we'll wrap it up. We'll call it a day. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody, and uh, let's and, uh, let's do it again tomorrow. At okay. least come back right, down have... and test some of these areas here. Okay. So uh, you, know, we, you know, you want to have the bigger okay. picture in mind when you trade, but you don't. You know, you can still trade these these setups basically in a vacuum. Um, right here, it's not real uh, clear. Tommy, start on the days you're just, it's just not going to be clear. Like the other day, yep, we were all over this in the room, right? And, uh, it won't this be in this was room. It's be in real room. clear. That was a fail breakdown. I wanted to be long. And it went straight up. Now, this is kind of no man's land, right? I mean, yeah, it's bullish, but this can easily pause at the bottom of this. So it could well, do that. Well, it could do that. And, uh, like when you get in these areas, you may say, you know what? It doesn't make sense to me. So you know what you're getting into it's not as clear. I'm not trading crude today. Right, that's not a bad way to trade. Uh, up here, you should always be. That's why we talk about all the time yeah, having playbooks. Right, you're just looking for specific setups that you the wait for, like a sniper, market. and then you take them when you see them. You don't just you know spray bullets everywhere, and every time the market moves, you're trying to jump in the trade. Right, so you may not like this area. Like I don't love this area in, in crude. I have no idea. As far as a, a longer term thesis, right? I'm not counting volume stuff. I'm just looking at a bigger picture. Of uh, you, uh, this is this is confusing right here. What this can do, right? This this is an important area where this directional conviction started. We can move a little higher, but again, this could keep ripping, or it could come back, right? So, <clears throat> I don't really have a clear cut idea of what I, of what's going to happen there. So, it would behoove you, unless you have a trade plan for specific things for the day, like maybe you say I like trading VWAP or whatever to just you know step aside of that particular market and you can tell the way this is trading today traders don't know what's going on here either right it's like it's rallying and then it's on and then it's rallying and then it's on so this whole area is like there's been a bunch of different zones that you know it's bouncing between them it's just because we're in a weird area so it, once again if you're not seeing what you want to see in your market <clears throat> don't trade it one hundred fifty-one contracts. All right, I'm close to getting filled here in wheat. <clears throat> um, that gas. I think we had a trade on this the other uh, last week, and it actually turned out to be a did exactly what I said I was going to do. If you remember, we were short, and then I said I'm ready because of all the algos in here. I said I'm ready for this for the next three hours, and I did that for about three hours, and then it just did that, and it turned out to be a huge winning trade. Uh, so hopefully, you guys, if you guys were mirroring me that day, you got some, you were short that, that gas and you were patient, like I explained. You know, the more the more you see this Christmas tree look in the market, the more you can expect this trade, right? But it's, if, once you, if you have your zones, you know how to plan, you just sit and wait. Sometimes it's immediate, sometimes it's four hours later. 
but we, you know, last Thursday was four hours later, but we got the we got the big move. <clears throat> um, so anyway, the stone was from earlier. This is Mac gas again. Now you got some more stuff here. That's not. I don't trade Mac gas all the time. One thirty is okay. That was more down here. I'm not going to mess with this market today because you know we had this zone here and then you had a zone here. It's kind of sandwiched in between here, so we'll find better opportunities. Let's see if I can fill in this. Not yet. All right, so we'll come back to that. <clears throat> so yes, recovered. So what I'm going to do here, I'm probably going to delete this zone now. Yeah, because we're ATR. So we went, <clears throat> this was a stop run earlier that I showed you. We definitely went ATR below there. We did retest. You could have caught this, that second wave down. The way I'm doing this, so say I did get short. Remember, I said I missed this trade. But if I did get short, the way I do this is I take half off at an hourly ATR. So say, let's let's see if I would have been filled here. So the hourly ATR is 21.6. So say 22 points. Did this move 22 points from the bottom of this zone? This was 80, 83. So we 61 would have been half an ATR. That would have been real close, but I would, would not have been filled. So I don't feel so bad now. You can see right here, look how close that came to. Yikes, that was about a point away. So I'd be, so be glad I didn't put that trade on because I'd be complaining right now because I would still, I would have held it all the way back again because I have my rules, right? So my rules are, you know, once if I would have taken this trade off of this, <clears throat> I get out at a half, at a half ATR. I mean, I'm sorry, I get out at an hourly ATR, half my position, and then I hold the other half until I get an opposing signal. So say something bullish came in, then I would get out of the other half or I'll get out of the whole thing. If it doesn't make it to an hourly ATR and I get a bullish signal, I'll get out of the whole thing. So technically, I would have been in this trade, and I would have not gotten out because I it didn't touch an hourly ATR. Um, <clears throat> again, that's assuming this was at 60 or 21 at the time. It could have been actually, I actually could have probably maybe been filled. Let's see here. Probably not, though. So we'll just say I wouldn't have been filled, and nothing new came in. I would have been stopped out of this trade, right? That's how I trade. And sometimes this happens where you don't, you you barely get close to getting filled. No dice, there was nothing new, comes all the way back and would have stopped me out. So you don't have to hear me complain on, I was gonna be short there. So regardless, this zone I'm gonna delete now because we traded an ATR above and below it, five minute ATR. <clears throat> I don't want it to confuse me once new stuff starts flowing in. So <clears throat> you can see over here, some st spot gamma stuff. Um, his main, uh, talk about today was you know you want to keep an eye on the VIX so this you guys may be wondering what this white line is this is the correlation tracker again part of the uh, book map uh, global plus and I just put in the VXX the um, that's the ETF VIX and you can see here so you can see like when this thing started to drop that's when we rally right Bruce I got a question for you why uh, Obviously, the VIX futures are on the CBOE. Why is there any way to ever get that information or that data from the from the CBOE? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll have to look into that. Um, I know there was kind of issue before. Um, I'm not sure if it's been resolved or not. But uh, let, let me let me uh, reach out and try to get back to you in just a few minutes. Okay. Um, so anyway, the, again, CBOE has their own feed for the for the VIX futures, um, they're like hoarding it. So it's like you can't get it on Bookmap. <clears throat> so this is the next best thing. This is just the VXX, the tracking stock, and that's this. So you need the DX feed to get this. So to, you need the DX feed to get, um, oh, I'm filled by the way, and the wheat trade. So we're short wheat. Um, I already have my stop in, right? Stops up there, so. Um, but you know, here's the cues. The way I use these is I'll just look in you know the beginning of the day. I want to see where all the liquidity is. Some, sometimes it's really clear cut. Other days it's not. And you can see this is basically you know showing you where we're headed, right? 
doesn't mean we're gonna go we're gonna make this this size of a move today but you can see nothing up here or I mean relatively and then you can just see bands of liquidity and remember liquidity is they're like it's like a magnet right so we will these guys want to get filled the longer the, the the longer you see this liquidity in here, and it's all been here since the open, the more they want to get filled. So you can bet, like yesterday, we saw the same look, and it, after the Fed came out, it like filled it, filled it, filled it. So you can expect we're coming back down here at some point. <clears throat> um, quickly, since we're talking about it, so this is Nasdaq. This this market is in trouble, right? So we. Bigger picture stuff, again, you always want to have a bigger picture view. This was a huge balance. This was an attempt to break out of balance. And then we built balance and tried to pull back to the top. Remember how we were just talking about it can pull back to the top or the high volume node? Well, it pulled back to the top and then it failed at this high volume node and then it went right through this one. So again, if this was a bullish market, this would have held last stand after a breakout is the high volume node of the prior balance. It went right through there, like hot, hot knife through butter yesterday. This market is in some serious trouble. So we could have these, you know, temporary rallies, but overall you should be looking for areas to go short because this market, again, is in pretty big trouble, in my, in my opinion. <clears throat> um, so this is what you do, should do every day, right? You, you look at this and you're like, okay, this, I want to find areas to be short. One, because of this market structure, right? Two, then you bring up your, you know, if you have the QQQ, you're like, okay, where's the liquidity? All oh, liquidity's all below. Okay, that bolsters my idea of being short. And then you just could sit back and wait for only short setups in your volume, your volume SI indicator setups, right? That's how, you, that's how good traders trade. They don't sit there and spray bullets everywhere. They wait for exact. So you could say, I don't care if they're like, for instance, this was a huge um, move up off of that, off of the sell ice, right? And you could be saying to yourself, I don't care that I missed this because I want to, I'm looking for places to be short, right? You've got to be okay with missing moves. You're not going to catch every move in the market, nor should you want to. You want, I mean, anyone would want to, but my point is you've got, you've got to limit based on you know, your market knowledge and what you're looking for and just wait for those setups. <clears throat> so, you know, yeah, it sucks I missed this. I wasn't aggressive out of here because that's not how I'm playing it. Um, but the real trade, the, the, the big trade, three, four, 500 points going forward is gonna be, in my opinion, to the short side. So you just sit here and wait. And the minute you get a short setup, it's gonna be go time. <clears throat> so that's what I'm hoping that happens while we're on this webinar. <clears throat> so let's take a look. We a bunch of nothing right now. Keep an eye on that. So crude is just bouncing around too. So getting not getting many signals right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to because we basically got pretty close to an ATR above here too. I'm just going to erase all this stuff because we're just basically doing that, and then once a new signal comes in, then we'll trade it. And QI size for by NQ. 151 contracts people are confused when i'm trying to show them so again the same i just showed you the area we're in crude and this is exactly what how it's trading like guys can't make a decision on which way this thing is going so um we may not get a signal in there today and that's fine because it doesn't look real appealing anyway all right so you just heard the nasdaq let's see if we get something on the uh so 150 that's you know again today 150 is definitely threshold uh i usually don't be nice for 100 contracts i usually don't go less than 150 
um, but today is it's definitely worth drawing the zone. So again, kind of where this spiked there, and this looks like a nice tight zone for us. Remember, where I'm, uh, I'm definitely leaning short, so I, I'll take any trade volume-wise, but I would prefer it to be to the short side based on what we just talked about, right? So let me make sure I did this right. No, I did not. I'm going to start spiking right about there. You want to incorporate all the prices in the spike. I'll change the color here too because this was by ice. All right. So now again, look, watch our ATR. Fif only 53 points. <laughs> Meaning we gotta, I got to see 53 points out of the zone. So again, you may say I'm, I'm, I'm watering. My mouth is watering for a short setup. The minute this breaks out of here, I'm short. Again, this is the science. The art is how you play these. I'm waiting for a full 50 points retest failure. Then I will get in at a three quarters of an ATR. But you could say, I want it right now, and I'm going to put my stop just above here. There's a spot gamma level. I'm going to go a little bit above the zone. I don't need to see the 50 points. And that's fine. Again, you got to determine that as a, as a trader for yourself, how aggressive you want to be off of these, these zones. Yesterday, I sat here again and watched NASDAQ, and I, I missed one the NASDAQ trade we were talking about on my PM webinar in my room. I missed the one because I was marking up a zone in ES, and it turned out to be like a 250-point trade. But the... Um, the ES, they were, you know, it was like a zone here and it broke it and just kept going and never retested. And then there was another one, broke it, just kept going. So you got to determine if you want to be aggressive or not. One of, the, one of the ways you can determine that is you can keep an eye on the relative volume, right? So if you see the relative volume really picking up, you can say, you know what, I'm not going to wait around for uh, retests. I'm just getting in. So see here and get these tick streaks out of the way so first and foremost we haven't even got in on this into these tick strikes we'll I'll get into that in a second but you can see here so this may be in a, a situation you can see look at the volume pickup so it turns yellow if it's two times or more for the equities so you can see there's some actually those down here I take that back <clears throat> there was some big volume here so this, this is what I was saying, where if you see a lot of like high relative volume coming in, so this is Sierra chart, high relative, relative volume. So what it's showing you is this exact time period, five minute time period for the last 30 days. So you know, hey, there's really increased volume in this area um, based on the last 30 days of this exact time. That's very important information to know. So this is my point, how we missed that. I didn't take that trade that, um, that broken ice trade then where the sell ice was down there where we just ripped out of well you could have said hey there's really big volume here if this breaks out of here i'm, I'm getting in because there's going to be some major puking and that's exactly what happened so now this is a different scenario where you can see it we're up here right and the volume subsiding so on this scenario we, we just drew the zone now you can say you know what i'm not being aggressive out of this zone i'm just giving you reasons to be aggressive or wait for a retest right so this one volume's dissipating you can say now i want to see a retest failure then i'll get in. You see the difference i'm just giving you guys examples on how you can decide when you're trading hey i want to jump in or i want to wait for a retest so again this is what i just showed you down here was all that high relative volume so you could have said wow there's tons of high relative volume the minute we break out of here, I'm getting, I'm going long, and you would have made, you know, 150 points. Up here is the volume is dissipating, so now I'm doing this anyway. But you can say, you know, the volume is dissipating now. I'm not jumping in right away because I'm expecting algos. Because when there's not a lot of high relative volume, that means the big money's not playing. That means algos start to play their games, right? Well, if algos are playing their games, you can almost certainly expect retests because that's all they do is this nonsense to take your money. 
So when the volume starts to dissipate, you can say, okay, it's dissipating. Now I'm going to wait for a full ATR retest failure. Okay. So again, I'm just giving you guys ideas on how you can play these zones aggressively or conservatively. <coughs> so I'm again waiting. Either way here, again, if this goes up 50 points, comes back, retest, and fails, I'll go long. If this comes down 50 points, retest, fails, I'll go short. I don't know what it's going to do yet until it breaks out of here. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. Any questions for so far? Doing a lot of talking and not a lot going on here trading-wise. <clears throat> uh, yeah, just, just a second here. Um, first off, um, your uh, question uh about cboe uh and vix futures uh is possible through dx feed uh, i'll set you up after the uh after the webinar scott uh really but, yeah that. yeah how so, long has that been available um <clears throat> i'm not sure uh but it, it's been out for a, for for a while um I, it, it was the newest edition i think maybe within the last year um but um uh anyway yeah we will um uh, add that for you. It's thirty-seven dollars a month, so just to to let everybody know uh, if you want that, uh, and and where you can find it um, is uh, if people are interested in it, uh, it's through DX Feed and it's through our website. So what you do is you log into Bookmap.com/portal, um, and then you'll see on the left hand side like uh, add subscriptions uh, or you know or add-ons uh, maybe it's called add-ons and you click on that and then you'll see the um, uh, DX feed and the different selections in there for what kind of data you want to get and what you want is the CBOE uh, that's the one that has the VIX okay so you'll have to need you'll need to restart um, we'll I'll set you up after the webinar Scott okay sounds good uh, any, any other questions? any other questions here? Hold on a minute. Um, <clears throat> no, I think we're good. Um, uh, yeah. So <laughs> Scott, like I said, uh, you know, you, you, you feel free to to you know, you've already given us like uh, 50 minutes here. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, stop at any time. Uh, I'm okay. Actually, give me one second. I'll be right back. Or I, I can rile you up maybe if you want. All right, I'm fine. I'm again my I can, way better than I was. I can try to rile you up and get you on a rant. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I don't have it in me. The rant. I don't have it no, in me. No, you're you're rantless today. Okay. <laughs> um, I know I'm I'm doing all right. So again, if I start to run out of gas, I always let you know. Okay, so we don't know. Again, we're just waiting for this to bust above or below here. Uh, all right, so the sweet trade's starting to work a little bit. So, again, for half this position, this is actually pretty pathetic. Um, you know, the ATR is 6.68, so we'll say seven points, seven cents. So I'm getting out of half of this, seven cents. Uh, again, it's just my rules uh, below the zone. So the zone was at the bottom of the zone is 44.50. So 37.50, I will be out of half of these, uh, half of this short. And then what I will do is I will hold the other half until I get an opposing signal, meaning a bullish signal. And if that doesn't, sometimes you're going to get moves that go 30, 40, 50 cents before you get any kind of signal. QI Siceford by NQ, 151 contracts. <coughs> All right, what's going on in NQ? Here we go. So this is pretty much right on top of the other zone. I'm just going to make this one big zone. You can see here another 200 plus coming in. Or not, I'm sorry, 189, but it's still coming in. So you can see this, the swipes look a little. This thing is so valuable. Seven hundred contracts. Once, once I learn the correct way to use these, these are going to be deadly. I mean, when you're, you see five. I mean, again, if you were to tell me there was five hundred icebergs, I'd fall off my chair, right? Like in Nasdaq, you see this is pretty common in the snakes. Or I call them snakes, so the sweeps. So there's going to these are going to be whole other setups. Iceberg sells EW. 
150 All right, so I'll come back to that in a second. So you can, this is what I'm talking about. Actually, I'm not seeing anything. Let's see if I get filled on that too. But if this turns out to be, I, I don't see the ice coming in here, the cell ice that he just announced. Um, come on, you can fill me. Come on, you can do it. You're going to come right to the exact tag and not film. Why am I not filled on that? All right, I'm just going to hop out of those so I don't have to sit here and watch it. It's pretty close. Because I'm not going to sit here and watch this and come all the way back while I'm, I can't monitor it. So we get, we're out of half, pretty close to the... I, it did touch the hourly ATR. I, I didn't get filled. Well, there it goes, of course. <laughs> just cost myself three ticks, but that's fine. All right, so we're in. So you can see here now... Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. So this could be now this is an opportunity to either add to this trade or not or I'm going to trail my stop. So hurry up and get back over to NASDAQ too. So you can see this sell ice coming in. By the way, you can see we'll talk about this tick strike too, but they're hammering grains right now. Um, all right, so we incorporated this sell ice, right? 225, that's a lot for wheat. So now what I can do is now I'm going to trail my stop based on this new setup, because if this turns into a bullish setup, I'm out. If it continues lower, I'm going to do the same thing now, right? So this is going to be a brand new position. If, it's, if this goes full ATR, retest fail, I'm going to put on a brand new position that has nothing to do with this one. I'm going to have the stop in the same spot, but this is how, when you catch trending moves on a, day, a trending day, you can have three, four, five, six positions on, and you're, only, you're now only risking based on your last setup, right? So, again, ATR is 2.25, right? So, I'm going to go three quarters in ATR above this zone for my stop. So, we'll say two points. 39.50, 41.50 will be where I will stop out of this current short then again if this holds holds the zone never comes up here it stops me out and then does full atr 2.25 points comes back retest fails three quarters of an atr two points i will put on a brand new position and my stop's going to go in the same spot and then this way is if this continues to trend down i'm going to have three two three four positions on for a huge move Right. And if it pops back up out of here, I made a, you know, I made a okay profit. <clears throat> we'll go back to that. I don't want to miss this. Thank you. It's nice if it's just hanging around this zone for me. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, okay. All right. So let's get this, this ice incorporated into this zone. You can see where that those snakes. That another great thing about these snakes, it really helps you draw your zone too, right? So, there you go. I mean, it's a large zone, but it is what it is, right? I mean, you had two big buy ice, so whatever way this breaks now, you have a total of. I mean, you got the sweeps, the snakes right here. I call them snakes. Again. Call them but sweeps. Call them sweeps, please. Sweeps. All right, sweeps. I'll call them snakes in my room. I just okay, I, okay. I, I get confused where I'm at. I'm disoriented. Um, so there's 150 here, 189. So you're talking about three, four hundred icebergs in this zone. So when we move out of here, this is enough fuel to push us a decent amount. So we'll see. But I'm not taking this trade until it either. Moves 50 points away, retest fails, because that's the ATR, or 50 points away, retest fails. So hopefully we'll still be on here when that happens. It could sit in this zone for an hour, who knows? <coughs> Excuse me. I think I missed something around the Russell. Yes, this was definitely uh, it. 
136. 173, this is definitely zone worthy. So again, Russell is, uh, my threshold is 150. So we wanna see where that started. And miss this trade, but we'll see. Remember, go to where it spiked there and get all the prices until it stops spiking. There you go. All right, so I haven't missed anything yet in this. So now we go look at our ATR. I'm sure this is pleasant too. Yeah, 60, 68 ticks, 67 ticks. Again, just move the decimal point, 67.7. <clears throat> so 68 ticks. Top of the zone was 90, 90, 91, so 91. So we need to get that basically 50, 51, 58. So 10 more ticks and that'll be an ATR above here. There we go. That's an ATR. So now if we retest fail, I'll go long. Once again. It, stop by NQ, 153 <clears throat> it may not retest. So you have to determine. You may say, hey, I want to be long. I'm getting long the minute it breaks out of that zone, no, right? And you're in. I'm waiting for the retest fail. Keep your eye on that. NQ by Seisford by NQ. 151 contracts. So you can see here, look at the sweeps that are coming in. Another eight, another 900. So that's what I'm talking about. The thresholds are definitely different with these sweeps. 162 contracts. And look at this, another, wow, 537. This is a ton. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let me just draw. I'm going to draw this zone just based on this thing because this is just enormous, especially with the 884. See so here. I'm just going to draw a separate zone for this one. <clears throat> here, there. I think that's right. So I'm just going to play off this zone independently. I know there was ice before this, but this is huge. So let's see what happens here. <coughs> Again, this is a, this is the most recent thing that happened. So that's why I'm okay with just drawing a zone just based on this. Again, 520 icebergs. You can see these sweeps, 800 sweeps. There's some serious investment in this area. So we can see that. We may get three tests here in Russell. <clears throat> I'll go along this. Again, I, I was hoping that the setups were short, right? I have a, I have my thesis is short, just is not happening right now, right? And this is why it's so important to understand real-time volume runs the show. I can think I, I can want to be short till the cows come home. This volume is telling me no dice. This is broken ice. You had to sell ice, you got an ATR below above there that this is broken ice. So the short thesis is not materializing right now, and that's fine. I'm playing strictly the setups. Um, actually, I see a question in here. Let's see. Oops, no, I just lost it. <laughs> One second. Can't move my there. Sam says, you talked about having a volume-based setup alone is enough, playing trap traders, but if you want to increase success even further, you can apply technical analysis on higher time frames. Can you explain this further? Well, 
that's pretty self-explainable, I think. I mean, you want to you want to have you know your your thesis of what's happening, right? So I want to be short, but the volume right now is telling me to be long. So I'm gonna I, I'll go long based on the setups. But so say for instance, over the next couple hours. We build balance, which we probably will, right? So, probably do this for the next couple hours, and you have balance, right? So, I'll take the setups either way. But so, say this comes in towards the end of the day, and we start to break the balance. Well, now that's an A plus setup in my mind. I have, and so say we get it. So we get a volume set up here, right? And it works, and it's it's bearish. Well, that's an A plus setup because I already know I want to be short overall, and now I have that this this happening that confirming my short bias with the volume right so meaning that that's in my favor as far as what i think is going to happen bigger picture i'm taking you know you can take trades either way based on these setups but when you get one in your favor of your thesis then you can increase your size right that that type of thing you know we talk about all the time that's an a plus trade or that's why you want to have playbooks so you know as soon as you see a setup in your favor here's a retest of the zone by the way um so i'm gonna go along here i can only put on probably two because of the size yeah all right, there's the retest of the zone i'll come back to the thesis stuff in a second all right so the atr is uh again <clears throat> only only seven 70 ticks 71 ticks so my little calculator because I can't think properly right now. So 53, 53 points is three quarters of an ATR. So or 53 ticks. So this is 90. Let's just say 90. So 43 I'll be in long. Just using the last two digits, obviously. All right. So once again, you had your setup, right? Broken ice. Ice tried to come in and stop it. Ripped right above it. Ripped right through it. Got a full ATR. Here's your retest of the zone. Now if it fails and it gets three quarters of an ATR, I will go long and then I will put my stop three quarters of an ATR below the zone. And then I will let it run. I will get out of half at an hourly ATR. So hourly ATR is 152 ticks. And then the other half I'll get out if I see an opposing signal. And I just do it over and over and over and over. And you don't have to, you know, wonder, oh, do I get out of here? We were talking about this last week with natural gas. Oh, it's coming back. I just had it. I had that trade. Uh, no, I, I look for the hourly ATR. Just like I said earlier in the yes, it didn't get there. I would have been I would have been stopped out of that trade. It didn't get go the hourly ATR. <clears throat> so I wait for the hourly ATR or, and or an opposing setup. So we'll see if I get filled on that. Not thrilled about being long, but I'm just following the volume because the volume runs the show. <clears throat> um, so anyway, yeah, you know, you just you've got to depending on what you look at, you may not you, you always want to know where we're at in the bigger picture. But you may be more of a day trader where you say, I'm just going to trade VWAP. <clears throat> All right. Just like a lot of guys just trade like trading VWAP. Right. I mean, this is not real clear today, but see here, it's just been all over the place. <clears throat> But, you know, this has been very volatile today. <clears throat> but you can say, like, on a, on a normal day where you say, okay, um, I'm not looking at the big picture today. I'm just going to look at VWAP, and, and I'll take any trades. If we're, as long as we're above VWAP, I'll, go, I'll take long trades, right? These are all playbooks that you should have. So, but, you know, again, when you have a, a bigger picture view, and then you get the stuff to line up in, in, in that favor. So you say you wanted to be long. Okay, well, we're above VWAP now. That That's a plus. Then you get your volume signal. And you're like, okay, this is A+. plus. I, I wanted to be long. We're above VWAP, and I got my volume signal. And I I have a, a bullish view of the market overall. That's my A-plus setup, right? That's what I'm trying to, to point out. So I'm taking trades either way, but if I if I were to get a short setup, then I want that I want to put more size on a bigger trade on where I would risk. So, for instance, we just showed that risk spreadsheet. You should be risking two percent on every trade. Well, if you get an A plus setup, 
You shouldn't be losing more than 6% of your account value in a day. Well, on an A-plus setup, you may want to put 4% of, the, of, your, of your allotted trade um, risk for the day on that one trade because it's that good of a trade, right? I told you guys this before. When I got back in the game, I was learning how to trade stocks with SMB, and they, <clears throat> this is about three years ago, and they literally penalize their traders if the traders don't put more of their allocated. So, for instance, they're allowed a $1,000 loss for the day. Well, if they're not putting at least 600 or 400 of that of that risk on their A-plus trades, then they literally would be grounded the next day and they can only trade on the simulator. So, you know, you can take these trades, but when you see them, everything lined up in your favor, you should be trading a little bigger, right? Not outside of what you should be risking in a day, but you should definitely take advantage of, right? So my point is, it's like, I want to be short this, right? So... I'll, I'll go long if, if it warrants. I don't like it. So, but if I do get a short, so let's say this turns into be a short setup, well, I should be putting more on because I want to be short overall. So why would I put the same amount on, on a long trade that I don't really like versus a short trade that I love? See what I'm saying? So that's what you have to determine once you understand how to read, you know, the bigger picture stuff. And you definitely need to know where we're at in the bigger picture. Um... <clears throat> Any other questions, Bruce? So this is the wheat still in this zone. I'm still waiting potentially to add to this trade. I haven't been stepped out yet either. <clears throat> no, no other comments uh, or questions at the moment. Just an incredible teacher. Yeah, pretty clear, much. Clear, clear, clear as, concise. Clear as day. <laughs> um. Okay, so crude again, this is exactly what so this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, we looked at this earlier. Like, I have no idea right here what bigger picture, what, what this is going to do. This could fail here. Like we said, it can move higher to the high volume node. I don't know, right? So there would be, today, there would be no A-plus trades in this market for me, right? I would take, I'll still take trades based on the volume, but there's no, no A-plus trades because I don't have a strong conviction. So I was trying to tell you the other day. I had a strong conviction on this. This is a failed breakdown. I love this one of my favorite trades. So if I get any long signals there, those were A plus trades. See the difference? So it doesn't mean you just have to sit and wait for only A plus trades. You probably should, but you don't have to. But when you do get them, you should be putting more size on. Crude's doing nothing. Gold's doing nothing. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on in, uh, all right, so I'm long Russell. We got Phil at that three quarters ATR. So what did I say it was again? 70, 72, 72 ticks. So again, that's like 50, 54, 54 ticks is my what is that, three quarter ATR. So I'm gonna go 54 ticks below this zone. The stop out, so we're at 40. It's like 98 ish, right around there. So that's my stop. Huge, that's pretty big risk, but it is what it is, right? I'm dynamically trading the volatility of the day. The ATR right now is 72 ticks. It is what it is. If you don't like the volatility, don't trade it, but you can't. This is where traders make the biggest mistakes, right? They're like, okay, yeah, I'm doing everything Scott does. Okay, I'm getting long, but you know, I, I can't, I can't risk all the way down in here. So I'm going to stop out right here. So this is probably going to get me on a rant, right? This is the biggest fallacy of traders in the history of trading. <clears throat> well, I, yeah, I, I like this long. I'm going to give this a shot, but I'm going to risk right to here because I, you know, I don't want to risk that much. Okay, well, what is right there? What, what does that mean? It means nothing. The market doesn't care that you only want to lose that amount that amount of ticks, right? You need to be putting your stops in an area that the market respects or cares about. The market does not care that you only want to risk 20 ticks when you need to be risking, you know, 90. So this is where traders get into trouble. They try to really, you know, contain their risk because they don't want to risk that much. And then it, the market does this and stops you out and then it goes. And then you sit here all day stewing that you got stepped out. That's the whole idea of the structure of these zones where you know, okay, as long as this doesn't violate three quarters of an ATR below this zone, 
this they can algo me for four hours i don't care or until i see something opposite right and something actually opposite is coming in here we'll draw here in a second but <clears throat> point is don't be like 99 percent of retail traders and try to control your risk and just put your stop right there or the, the, the other biggest thing this is what's really going to get me on the ramp of course not don't don't do it man save your rant for next time the the trailing stop feature it is the it is the dumbest thing i've ever seen in my entire life it's like if you have automated trailing stops well, what what the hell does that mean it doesn't it, the market doesn't care about your stops. It, it doesn't care about that area, right? So it's like you get in, you have it set up on your, I can't even be, I believe firms that even offer it. It's like, you know, these, these software programs offer it. When you get in and it's like, it's a it's a 20, 20 tick trailing stop. So it'll trail it up. And then any any kind of blip, like algo, you're, you're stopped out. Like what what is this area? Uh, if something comes in, fine. But you, you know, you don't trail your stop on anything the only time you trade your stop is on based on a volume setup or something important, not because you don't want to give money back. Because trust me, you will give it back and you're going to get stopped out and then the market's going to keep going. Oh, well, that's pretty mild because I got to draw the zone, but <clears throat> that, 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 I just have never understood that my entire life. I've never in my life used trailing, automatic trailing stops like based on price it doesn't you know you you got to base it at least on something don't just base it on your p l because you're definitely going to throw away money constantly and that's what retail traders do and that's why retail traders don't make it so now and i just want to make sure i get all these prices this is perfect right now i'm going to either be able to add to this trade or i can trail my stop <clears throat> i may have missed this that nasdaq long I'm afraid to even look at that. Hold on a second. All right, so this is this newest ice, right? So what can I do? Same thing I did before. So we said 54 ticks was the ATR. So I'm using the last two digits here. 80 minus 54 is 30, 26, right? So now I put my stop at 26. All right, and now I can delete this. So I'm able to now trail based on a new setup. Exactly what we're looking at in week two. I'll go back to that in a second. But now because of this new setup, now I trailed it three quarters of an ATR below this. Now, if this goes 72 ticks, comes back, retest fails, I'll put on a brand new position that is independent of this one. And again, if you catch a trending move, you may get setup after setup after setup, and you're adding, trailing your stop, adding, trailing your stop. You, that's where you make have your month making day that's another one of my rants <clears throat> most traders think they're going to come in here and generate a consistent income every single day like a regular job it's not going to happen your goal as a trader is to make a little lose a little make a little because you never know when you're going to get the trending trade right your goal is to keep making yourself available for when it happens right so most days like you'll you'll do this and it'll come back and you'll make a little bit or you'll you'll get in and you'll step out but the whole idea is make a little lose a little make a little lose a little and then when you finally get a trending day then you make your month or year you know in a year you're going to have probably three four five month making days and that's going to make your entire p l for the year traders just cannot grasp that or don't want to grasp that they think they're going to come in here and generate a, a, a consistent profit every day it's not going to happen it's not, especially as a click trader. <clears throat> so your goal is to keep making yourself so keep making yourself available with these setups. And when you finally do catch the trending move, you're adding, trailing your stop, adding, trailing your stop, and then you have a monster day that makes your makes your month, and then on to the next one. <clears throat> All right. So this was uh, the bottom top of this zone was 06. <clears throat> so we need to see the ATR. It was 70 something. I lost that chart. So afraid I don't even want to look at the at the Nasdaq because I know I just missed a trade in there. At least I have something on, but equity wise, so 70, 70 ticks, 70, 71 ticks. So this was 07. So we need to see. 
Again, I'm going to the last two digits. We're not quite there yet, right? We're at 65, 60. So once this turns 78, it touches 78, that'll be a full ATR. Then I'll wait for the retest, and then I'll get another three quarters of ATR with a brand new position. But anyway, the worst case scenario is I've just minimized or I've pulled in my risk a little bit because I was able to, off of the newest setup, move my stop up three quarters of an ATR below this zone. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's see what I just cost myself here. No, nothing. All right, so this zone is really, really important. So we never got an ATR below here, I don't think. Let's see what the ATR was. Yeah, 53 points, not even close. So we never got an ATR below here, nor above. But you can see this just came back into this area. Here's your sweeps. And it ran into more buy ice, so right in the middle of this zone. So once this finally gets 50 points above here, retest failure, I'll go long again. If you say, you know what, I've seen enough, the minute this breaks out of here again, I'm going to go, I'm going to go long. <clears throat> so here, here's a good example, right? If you, if you decided to be aggressive out of, out of this zone, on the first break, well, now it's back in your face, right? So say you're like, ah, I'm, I'm going long. This was a ton. There's some sweeps. I'm going, I'm going long. <clears throat> well, now it's already back, right? So it's like, that's why I wait for full ATR retest failure. So that has not happened yet. I'm keeping an eye on that. <clears throat> um, all right, so just along that, nice controlled risk here. Potentially adding to this trade to we get to what did I say we needed to get to 70, 71 to not get there for a full ATR yet. We still in this, still in the zone. <clears throat> Gold, heard something fire off in here. There you go. Biggest of the day. By far. 200 by icebergs. Mark this up. Remember, go to where it spiked. There. Incorporate all the prices in the spike. This is actually a pretty mild zone for gold. <clears throat> Gold's in trouble too, by the way. We'll go over that here quickly. Bigger picture stuff I'm talking. All right, so that's that zone. That doesn't look great over Russell Ice for sell alert at RT, 150 contracts. I'll come right back to this. Let me see soon. I have a uh, position. So here's some more sell ice right in the middle of this zone again. So I don't have to draw anything. I'm just going to leave the zone as it is. <clears throat> so this could come all the way back and stop me out. Or I could do that. So we didn't get the full ATR again on this first move, so I'm not going, I'm not adding to this position. I, I need to see a full ATR out of here, retest fail. That has not happened yet. <clears throat> All right, so back to gold. So ATR is 22 ticks. It's a little more normal than these equity markets. Though so the bottom of the zone was, say, 16. We only got about 16 ticks below here. We needed 22, right? Got down at even, 1790 even. Um, so we needed 94 for a full full ATR. So this still is not for my trade. Again, you can say, you know what? That's all I need to see. I'm going short. I'm waiting for a full ATR. Retest. Fail. Three quarters of ATR. I will go short. Stop goes three quarters of ATR above this zone. All right, so quickly, bigger picture gold. <clears throat> this thing's not, it's not going to end nicely. What's so funny is I tell my roommate, I don't know if you guys, if you ever watch Fox News, they have this, <laughs> they have this gold commercial, like, I'd say every three or four days. 
uh, these clowns come on and say, you've got to be long gold and silver. Every time that commercial comes on, the market does that the next day. It's hysterical. So anyway, <clears throat> we were talking about this. I've talked about this on here too. We had this fail breakdown, one of my favorite trades, like always. Great long, no balance. Again, tried to break out, retested what? High volume node, that's this zone. Held where it should have, launched the other day, launched again, and then all of a sudden things started to change, right? So you had this, that's a fail breakout. That's not good if you're long. Then this was a fail breakout. Got through that high volume node. That's not good if you're long. And bigger, bigger picture, this is multi-day going back to the middle of December. This is a failed, it held where it should have the first time. It should have done that. Instead, we came back again, and now we're through this high volume node. This market's in, in trouble. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't mean, you know, could just sit here and balance for a while, but this is, you know, we get through this, which is I almost certain it's going to, because again, this is one of the playbooks we talk about in my room when you have, this is the most current balance, right? When you break down out of that balance, and that was a fail breakout, once you get, you know, this is the most recent structure. So all of these longs are going to puke, and it's going to rip right through this, and we're going much lower, in my opinion. So my thesis for this market was long, and now I've changed my thesis, right? Doesn't mean I won't take trades both ways, but if I get a short setup, especially if this gets through this high volume node here and you start getting short signals on the volume, that's a plus trade. So you see, see what I'm saying? I'll take trades no matter what, because we could do that for a while, but you start getting short signal, once we get through this high volume node, that's gonna be the three, four, 500 tick trade to the downside, and it's coming in the next couple of days, in my opinion, so we'll see. <clears throat> All right, Bruce, I'm running out of gas. Any questions, concerns? Uh, no, no. I think we're I think we're all uh, all caught up here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, take a, take a rest, Scott, uh, <laughs> and uh, recoup. I'm 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 glad to hear that uh, you're back though, and uh, uh, you know, uh, sounds like it's kind of coming to an end here for you. Uh, I mean, yeah. you're getting over it, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, no, uh, other than that, uh, yeah, you've been going for like an hour and, and 20 minutes or so. Uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up and uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, you know, see you uh, next next week, next Thursday. OK, yeah. So remember, this NASDAQ area is going to be really important. Uh, don't mind that. I just didn't delete that. That was the bottom of that first ice zone. This is the this is the major one here. So. Again, the way I'm going to play this zone is I'm waiting for a full ATR either way. I'm hoping it's down, but if it's not, I'll go along. But once we launch out of here, retest fail, I will take that trade. And you're going to get a big move. You're probably going to get a 100, 200 point move easily off of that. Once that happens, I'm still long, um, still long Russell. So again, I'm still waiting for an ATR. And this came in again, right? Make sure this didn't... So I can, I'm gonna expand this zone a little bit because you see this last, this latest ice that came in, came down to here. So I'm just gonna move this zone. There. Actually, trail, I'm gonna my stop down a little bit because of that newest zone. So again, 71, so when we say 54 ticks, so 54 ticks below this zone. So 64 is 10, basically 10. I'll move this down a little bit. Again, that's based on this that new new ice that came in. So um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for this to do that, that, and that, and then I'll add to that trade. For some reason, if this turns into a Titanic setup, meaning so ice basically holds and because it never got an ATR above. As long as this doesn't get an ATR above, this is can still considered a Titanic setup. If I get stopped out here, then I'll wait for a retest failure and I will go short off of this stuff. Right, so I'll, I'll stop out and then I'll turn around and flip it the other way. Again, I have to wait for an ATR out of here to determine that. 
so I got that, and then the other trade, I'm still in the short wheat. I will add to this trade if we ever get an ATR below here. Just sitting in here, or if it stops me out, then it stops me out. You know, again, if, if I get stopped out of this and it goes full ATR, retest fail, then I'll go long, right? We don't know what this is yet. So I'll stop out and then I'll flip it. If not, I'll add to it. <clears throat> so I hope it's making sense on, you know, how I'm trading these zones. And once again, you can be profitable just trading volume. You, you'll be do even better if you add in important areas where you increase your size with A plus trades. That's the that's the lesson for today. <clears throat> All right, Bruce. Um, yeah, e excellent, Scott. Uh, uh, very very helpful. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, very much. And uh, uh, take take a rest, and uh, we'll catch up with you on uh, next Thursday. Cool. Thanks for having me. I'll see you guys next week. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks.